Why did we choose an old RV? So why we bought a 1993 old RV? Basically because these are easier to work on. If you're a DIYer and you have a budget and you want to travel, I can get parts for this at any auto parts store. Believe me, I have bought parts from every single one of them. You name Napa, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, uh, CarQuest. You know, some towns only have one. Some towns have five different kinds to choose from, but only one will actually have the part in stock. But it's rare that they that they have to order it. We've had to wait what one time maybe. And it usually comes in within a few days. It's usually the next day. So yeah. It, it, as long as you get it like ordered before five o'clock, it's usually there like the next morning but it has saved us so many times definitely even on our trial run before we actually took off oh we yeah first little mini vacation through kansas we broke down like we, we got even... right outside of town <laughs> oh yeah we, we got probably what five miles out of town and blew a header gasket yeah that was scary yeah. <laughs> it really made you think oh my god what are we doing yeah are you sure but you want to do this? <laughs> so many things have needed repaired in the last year on the road. I'm pretty confident now that if so, I mean, unless it's like major engine failure or transmission or something, anything else, if it's a part, I can fix it. You know, these things are very easy to work on. And if when you get something in the 90s or older, I can usually find a YouTube video that shows me exactly how to do it, you know, what to do. Or you can find a blog. I've found so many blogs where, you know, if I don't know what's going on with something, I can find a blog where there's somebody, it's happened to somebody else. Now, this is a Chevy P30 chassis. And that's all I have to do is go to the auto parts store and tell them I have a 1993 Chevy P30 with a 7.4 liter. And they got the part. And I think it's the same way if you have the older Ford chassis. I think the older Ford was like a F53, but don't quote me. And also like the Class C's, most older Class C's, if it's a van front end, most of the parts you can get at the auto parts store. Now anything inside the RV, that's going to be an RV shop where you're going to have to order it, just like any other RV. But the big misconception that people have about RVs are made like junk that's not true I don't believe that you know th this RV takes a lot of punishment yeah. and I mean a lot of punishment some of these roads even the paved roads are horrible it's like an earthquake all day long it's like an even earthquake. on the main highways sometimes there's like these giant cracks every mm -hmm. 10 feet and you yeah. feel every single one of those bumps or the transitions to the bridges mm -hmm. is usually a big bump you know your house couldn't take that if your house had one big bump like that you'd have cracks all over your walls windows we literally would break. get air sometimes in our oh seats yeah from i mean from dips on regular in the roads and highways yeah mm -hmm. exactly usually the biggest dips is where it doesn't say there's a bump coming <laughs> and then where it does you'll just feel like a little bump <laughs> exactly but so all there's the no warning you just have to be Mm -hmm. you know as careful as you can try to take those bumps as easy as you can but yeah I still look back sometimes after that and I'm like holy crap our house is still back there <laughs> yeah exactly it takes a lot of punishment and things don't break that often just for us sometimes when they break they it comes in clusters <laughs> 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 but I mean all in all I have not done that much work to this for us for the amount of miles we've put on and living in it every single day it hasn't needed really that much yeah you know I mean your regular maintenance you have to realize it's a 1993 exactly. so you know things are gonna wear out rubber's gonna deteriorate you yep. know different things like that seals and stuff yeah. but so as they normal. as they go out you replace them 
Now, I tried to do most of the major things before we even hit the road. You know, we did new tires, we did all new brakes all the way around. You know, I even changed coolant, flushed the coolant, breather, we did the headers. The headers, I will say, is the best upgrade, and that is something easy. If you can turn a wrench, these the, those headers are just bolt-on. Everything is bolt-on. You tell them what kind of motorhome and what year, and they, it, it, you take off your old stuff, and it bolts right back on. You can do it by yourself in a day. Those big hills, oh my gosh, it's made all the difference. Yeah, and it you has. go up a lot of big hills. I a mean, not just Rockies, you know, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we have more power now with the headers pulling the trailer than what we did before with no trailer. We have more power now. That's crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> I mean, I've done a couple other things. We have k air filter. We have upgraded spark plugs and wires and distributor cap and a few other things like that. And I have one other upgrade. It's not a huge upgrade, but it's coming very soon. We're getting rid of that fan and fan clutch. I'm tired of replacing it. And those rob power from your engine, especially when it's on. That's that's still in power. It's resistance on your motor. So we're getting rid of that. It's going to be deleted and we're going to do electric fans. And that will make a lot of difference also. Awesome. And you won't hear that big fan. If you have an old motor home, <laughs> You know what that fan sounds like. Sometimes when we're driving, my family calls. I gotta text them back. I'll let you. I'll call you back when we're done, cause yeah. you can't even hardly hear with the. Yeah. Well, only when only when it's only when it's warm out and that fan's roaring. Yeah. <laughs> but a very good tip if you have an older RV and you have the manual fan that's on the engine with the clutch. If you drive when it's cooler keep that fan off as much as you can you will get a lot better miles per gallon and it will run better it's just a little tip that's why we like to drive at night or early in the morning when we drive and it's hot out that fan runs a lot more and we don't have as much power and we're burning more gas and i can tell the difference it's very very easy to tell the difference and it's a lot more comfortable too. I mean, nobody really enjoys driving with the sun beating down on them. If you have a big windshield, it's much more comfortable yeah. to drive in the evening. And we don't normally run the AC when we drive. We try not to. We can't right now. The generator's not fixed yet. I just haven't got to it. But even even when it worked, I mean, we have a few times drove with the AC on. I mean, sometimes you have to. It'd be 100 degrees in here if we didn't. But we try not to. That's why we try to travel when it's a little cooler out. But Ideally, that's how we like to travel, but does it always happen no, that way? I mean, no, sometimes we just life. have to get somewhere, so exactly. we go. Exactly, and you deal with it. <laughs> Run the air or whatever we got to do. Are you done rambling? So basically, I mean, <laughs> no. like if you have unlimited money and you have a new coach and you don't care if you got to take it to an RV shop, then this video probably wasn't for you. But for the average person that wants to get on the road and you don't have a huge income or you're not retired yet or whatever, mm -hmm. It helps if you can work on your own stuff. You know, your RV, your, your vehicle if you're towing it, you know. It all adds up, even just doing your own oil changes and things like that, it all, it adds up really quickly. Especially Definitely. when you're traveling all the time. And you shouldn't be afraid to give it a try. You know, like you said, there's always instructions and YouTube exactly. videos out there that will show you step by step what you have to do. So just because you've never done it before, doesn't mean you can't do it and it's definitely saved us a ton of oh, money if man. we would have had to go to the shop every single time something little went wrong we probably would not be traveling right now yeah we wouldn't be here right <laughs> now. we would probably be parked in st joe or i don't know trying somewhere to save trying to work or something exactly okay. all right guys so we will see you very soon we are still in albuquerque we're trying to get some footage and some pictures of the balloons everything's not cooperating the weather it is finally we finally got a nice day out so yeah it's been really cloudy and rain cool. very cool we finally got rain and we got hail yesterday it is hailing like crazy i don't think any balloons will be going up
luckily it was only like pea size, but it started coming down. We was a little freaked out for a minute. You get a little nervous, yeah. We, I don't the like main kale. thing I worry about is our solar panels. I just don't know how strong they are. I'm gonna eventually get something I can cover them up because that's crazy. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe below. Leave us a comment. Give us a big thumbs up. Give us your opinions. Um, what do you think about older RVs compared to newer RVs? Yeah. And we're also on social media. Twitter is Kelly's RV Travels. Um, yeah. Facebook, Instagram is Camping with the Kellys. Yep. So leave us a comment. Check us out. There's links in the video description below for everything. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Wow.